Honoured guests, fellow reservists, ladies and gentlemen. On the 21st of October 1917, General Sir Edmund Allenby was deploying his forces in preparation for the third attempt to take the... John, you've got a message. <laughs> <laughs> to take the Gaza Beersheba line. Sorry. Uh, since the halting of the Ottoman forces heading to close the Suez Canal at the Battle of Romani in August 1916, the British forces had been working their way up the coast on a line that went out touching on the Negev, the desert to the east, and the coast. The coast was the main thing because that's where the pipelines were, that's where they could lay, that's where they could get their water. But when they hit Gaza on the 21st of October, everything stopped. General Sir Archibald Murray was fighting the battle from his cushy Cairo headquarters. And he was relying on telecommunications. He was a future man. He was using the latest technology as it was. The Turks were being forced from the town as darkness approached on that day. The assault was going in and it was working. But news went back to Cairo that there were Turkish forces assembling for a counter-attack. The attack was, the assault was called off and victory was satched, snatched from the jaws of defeat. There were no forces assembling and back in Cairo you couldn't see it. Murray decided to attack again on the 17th of April. By then the Turkish garrison at Gaza and along the line to Beersheba was greatly reinforced. The assault under the command of a Lieutenant General Dobell, a Canadian serving with the British forces, was not a success again. It took him six months to have another go. And in that six months, there'd been a few changes. General Sir Archibald Murray had assumed command. General Murray had had great success in France, not necessarily seen by his superiors as great success, and it was better to get him off to a sideshow where he couldn't do any damage. He did damage there. At the same time, General Sir Harry Chevelle was promoted to command the, uh, uh, what was now called the Desert Mounted Corps. Allenby's plan was to hold the bulk of the Turkish forces uh, at Gaza by a feint. He was then going to move against Beersheba. Now, you think, if you look at the thing, it's a single line, Gaza, Beersheba. Why is Beersheba so important? Because Beersheba had water. If they broke through at Beersheba, was on the flank, then they could go through with such force as to make the rest of the line withdraw. Wasn't any worth, wasn't worthwhile going beyond Beersheba because beyond Beersheba you had the Judean hills and beyond that the Dead Sea. There wasn't any water there that would support a suitable force to be able to move and make the line withdraw. The plan called for an attack by the 20th Infantry Corps from the southwest with the Desert Mounted Corps holding the ground to the south and east, moving into the town only once 
the infantry had taken the wells. The plan was not for a mounted or light horse engagement. It was an infantry job with the cavalry doing what the cavalry did, which was to move in and uh, secure the well, uh, into the town once the wells had been secured. Didn't quite work out that way. 21st of October saw the light horse assembling south of Gaza, near the coast and water. They would move out on the 27th. Three long days in the desert would follow without any water. They moved past a town called Azul, which was about 25k south of Beersheba, and some of them got some water there. But they then had another 50 kilometres to run before they got into position near Beersheba. Now, in Beersheba, as they moved into position, it became obvious to Chevelle that the key ground that they had to take in order to get into the town, or in order to have an approach to the town, was Tel El Saba. Tel El Saba is like a pimple hill almost at the end of a, a range of hills and it dominates Beersheba, the town. It's now called Tel Beersheba. It's now the, the site of Abraham's well, well and I'm sure, sure if you take one of the Israeli travel centres guides and go there, uh, they will show you all that sort of thing. Very, very interesting place. But when you get there, you see it dominates everything. Chevelle said, that's got to go. And he sent against it the uh, New Zealand General Chater. He was commanding the Anzac Mounted Division, which was centred on the New Zealand Mounted Rifles. The attack started at 0900 on the 31st. By the time the hill was taken at 1500, all of the Light Horse Brigades, except for one, had been sucked into that fight. Including the 1st Light Horse Brigade, and the 1st Light Horse Brigade contains the regiment that I served in. That's my connection to this particular thing. At 3 o'clock, they finally took Tel El Sabah. At the same time, so what had happened there was a, a battalion of Turks had held back a division plus for five hours. At the same time, 20 Corps was in trouble. They couldn't break into Bathsheba either. And so what you had was Allenby, kind of bloke who went forward, went forward, he was at the 20 Corps headquarters and he telegraphed Chevelle and said, we've got to take it tonight. The men and the horses can't go without any water for any longer. You've got to, you've got to do something. And what he did was use Brigadier General Brant Grant's 4th Light Horse Brigade. The 4th, the 12th and the 11th Light Horse Regiments. The 4th and 12th did the assault. The 11th was in reserve. He had used his time during the day to get aerial reconnaissance to look at the trench lines that he would have to go through if he went into the town. So he was thinking ahead. And the trench lines were the ones that were opposing him were lightly wired and did not have horse pits. And so he knew that the, uh, an assault was possible. He ordered the, uh, an approach at the gallop, a dismount on objective, and of course, the rest is legend. 